Watchers, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to do a little bit of a review and comparison. So uh, this will be mainly focused on this particular watch. This is uh, courtesy of Banggood. Uh, I call this the Smail Mudmaster 1545 a dual display alarm chronograph that's most of its functions this is in khaki color this is what they've designated this but of course it comes in various other color combinations you can check out uh, on the website so you know it, it's on sale for around ten dollars the the uh, i guess the full retail that they kind of list there is around the twenty dollar mark but you can usually find this on significant discount and i'll link everything uh, i can find out the bottom in terms of sourcing for this particular watch okay so i'm going to uh, kind of review this one and compare it uh, with the real thing that i have here and you can see how much inspiration uh, that it takes from the real mudmaster gwg 1000 uh, this is my uh, g-shock camouflage version okay so we're going to go uh, side by side on that and at the end of the uh, review i'm going to compare this like in a little bit of a side by side with this scame 1155B, which I reviewed a little while back. Okay, so let's just get into the case description. So this one uh, is essentially identical to the Scame in terms of uh, dimensions here. I'm just gonna undo uh, the strap. Uh, so the case dimension, uh, uh, and also most of it's identical to the real thing, 56 millimeters across there between my, my two fingers there. Uh, okay, the thickness is 19 millimeters from the bottom to the top of the case and much of that is due to the case back profile you can see it juts out a bit there whereas the real thing is uh, 18 millimeters so much of the difference i mean between the real mudmaster 18 millimeters and 19 millimeters being the kind of the copy is that case back profile the real one actually is a little bit more in a streamlined it doesn't actually jut out um, the case body itself, if you measure it, you know, just where the buttons, the, the, the wall where the buttons come out between my two fingers there is 48 millimeters as per the real thing. And then if you measure the diameter of that wool time bezel, you know, that, that kind of bezel insert with the different cities there, it's actually 39 millimeters. The weight of this watch, 72 grams, is pretty much identical to the Scame and substantially lighter than the real Mudmaster, which is actually a 119 gram watch. So very different in terms of the actual uh, watch size there. Okay, the back of the, the watch is actually screw secured. So underneath there, if you can see there, there's, there's screws on, two screws on that side, two screws on that side. The same as the real thing in terms of uh, four screws uh, securing the screw uh, case back there. Um, you know, the, the actual real one has a, a lot more of a, I guess, a more mature looking profile, I gotta say, it's, it's quite different. Uh, but that profile is uh, essentially identical to, you know, the, the Scame there, okay? It's almost as if they come from the same factory, which I wouldn't be surprised to learn that uh, they in fact do. Okay, this one has, uh, again, plastic buttons. Okay, it feels plastic anyway. I, I don't, I'd be very surprised if it's anything other than plastic, whereas the real Mudmaster has uh, steel buttons that, that you guys might know about. Uh, the water resistance of this one is rated at 50 meters versus 200 meters uh, for the real thing. Of course, the real thing is a G-Shock, which are all uh, 200 meter as standard. Uh, and then uh, just showing you the dial here. This dial is not, not too badly done. You know, it, it's a multi-textured dial uh, with three LCD apertures. Okay, so that, that hand there, unlike the real thing, the real thing actually rotates, you know, when you change modes. Right, that, that hand at the 10 o'clock position. Okay, you can see it, it rotates when you change mode, and I'm just gonna put it back to the 12 o'clock position. This one actually doesn't move. It, okay, there's some uh, LCD, uh, you know, kind of blinking there. Hopefully the camera captures some of this, and then it's got two actual useful readouts, which are the one at the three o'clock and the one at the six o'clock position. Okay, so two uh, real LCD apertures with one kind of decorative one. Uh, loom wise uh, only uh, really on two hands um, okay the the two main hands it doesn't really have uh, uh, more loom than that I'll put a loom shot uh, on the top left here versus the real one on the top right here you can see the real one is actually uh, loomed on all indices and three hands as opposed to the you know the the copy here 
And then glass wise on top of the dial is uh, is acrylic, right? This is what uh, uh, I found some information on the website stating this is acrylic, which is you know I, I think all right um, uh, for a cheap watch, uh, and Casio does that for your cheap watches versus Sapphire for the real master of G. Uh, the the backlighting on this watch is actually relatively poor. I'll show you the real one first, which actually has backlighting plus a uh, front lighting, which comes out at the six o'clock position there. Uh, this one is, uh, let's see if I can show it to you. Okay, there you go. You can actually see some of that coming through. All right, it's not very bright. It, yes, if, it, if you're in very dark uh, you know, conditions, you will actually find that useful. Uh, but you know anything other than that, it, it's actually, you know, barely helpful. Uh, and this LCD is actually quite difficult to read. You know, it, you know, I, you know, right? You can see it there, but in certain angles, it's almost it almost disappears. It's not a very easy negative LCD display to read at all. All right, let's just get into the movement here, and this will be a bit challenging. I'll try to hold it at an angle where I can actually show you that LCD. So analog digital with that negative display, quartz kind of multifunction thing. It does have a dual time, and this one is set you know, completely independently to the LCD one. You just pull that, it hacks it, and you can set the main hands, which are a separate module to uh, the actual LCD time, unlike the real one, which actually syncs the hands to what you set the LCD is. Um, so changing modes here, so this is a time display, you can see uh, at the top here, it's actually just a double uh, of the second counter, it doesn't, you know, you hold that down to get the date, and you hold that down to get the alarm, and to set the alarm, you kind of just hold, I think hold this down, and then hold, and then press that, and then I've turned on the alarm now, and there I've turned off the alarm, okay, there's a little alarm indicator uh, at the 4 o'clock position, let's see if I can capture that. Hopefully you see that come on and off, okay? So that, that's actually the functions of the main time here. This one is a double or second light button as with the main button here. Okay, changing modes. This is the one uh, one hundredth of a second, 24 hour stopwatch, so start. Okay, that's all that is. Okay, counting, stop, and uh, reset. Okay, that's just a stopwatch. And go, go back to main time. So go past the stopwatch and this is just the alarm. Okay, there's no kind of hourly chime function that I've identified on this watch and it didn't actually come with a manual. So if you know whether there is an hourly chime function, uh, let me know because I haven't been able to figure it out. All this is just setting the alarm time here on this mode. Okay, again, stopwatch, alarm, and then into time setting mode. And that's it. That's all you get for this uh, particular module. Um, in terms of comparison with the, the real thing, I, I, you know, there's, there's nothing to compare. It's like the Scame, essentially the same functions as the Scame. It doesn't have a timer, it doesn't have five alarms, world time with 48 cities, tough solar, atomic time, syncing, triple sensor, multi-resistant, what, you know, the, the list of the features of this $600 watch is as long as my arm, uh, I can't, you know, the, you can go on and on. Uh, of course, this is a 10 to $20 watch. Uh, what do you expect, right? It's, it's just aping the look and not much more than that. Okay, so there's a description of the module. Let's just talk about the strap, which is, you know, I, I think they've aped it pretty well in terms of the shape, but just the texture and the feel is just not up to the real thing. The real thing, it has more substance to it. It feels heavier. It's a little bit stiffer. This one has a little bit of a cheap look to it, I must say. If you, if you look at the bottom here, even though it's actually kind of, copied all the textures. I'll just show you the real thing. Uh, okay, this is how the real thing looks like, uh, the textures, but in hand, it feels quite different, right? So again, they've copied the textures here, but this one just has a bit more of a cheap look. Uh, in terms of the steel buckle, uh, of course, it doesn't have a steel keeper. The real thing has a steel keeper. Now, this one has a steel buckle, which is uh, a little bit better than the, the Scame, I have to say. So the thickness is not quite as thick as the real thing on my left hand here, right? But it's, you know, there's some substance to it, that, that, that buckle, you know, better than the, the Scame anyway. And I'll go into more details on the head-to-head -head there. Okay, so that's really it. Let's just put it on uh, for a wrist shot for you guys right here. And there we have it. Okay, so the profile, pretty much exactly identical to the real thing. Okay, so it's a massive, huge, resin case there which you know if it was made of steel it would make me look like a douchebag wearing this but somehow in casual situations you still get away with a massive g-shock resin case you know that's just something 
about G-Shocks that allow uh, the users to get away with. All right, so guys, so that, that's the watch. You know, uh, I'll just comment briefly on this watch itself. Um, super cheap, stolen good looks, right? A pretty good resin copy, uh, you know, in terms of just you know, at, at a, a casual glance, it, it's not a bad looking watch at all. And in terms of the feel of the resin, they've, they've kind of got a pretty good feel of the case resin, right? It's not quite the same, but it's pretty darn good compared to the real G-Shock. The, the strap is not quite as good. That one's more obviously different, but the resin case, not bad job at all, you know, mainly for the looks, not much of the function. Uh, I would say the cons, right? The bad LCD display with pretty bad LED lighting, not very, not very great at all, that one. Uh, it's really a super cheap watch with, you know, looks which are kind of just skin, skin deep. You're talking about two to 3% of the cost of the real thing or, or even less because this has gone up in price i think uh, for about two percent of the function but 80 percent of the looks much like i commented for the scame there okay so that that's the comparison with the real thing let me know your thoughts there and then i'll just put it uh, up to this uh, scame watch here so let me just undo the buckle first and put it side by side so uh, the one on the left is scame 1155b uh, it's a watch I reviewed a little while back and you know, reasonably popular review, a slightly different module. So I want to just compare these modules because this, this module here is uh, kind of similar to uh, the Scame 1155, the, the original or earlier model, except for the Scame has a multi-decorative display for the hand position at the, the 10 o'clock, that subdial, right? Whereas this male actually has a, I guess, a pretend hand there, okay? That's a slightly different look between the, the 1155 and the Smail. Uh, and then this is the upgraded module. I think this is a later one, the 1155B. So let's just compare uh, these particular watches. Um, in terms of dimensions and weight, they are absolutely identical, right? So I'm not gonna go through that again in terms of the case size, the case profile, I showed you that earlier, right? They've got the same thickness at 19 uh, millimeters and you know all the other dimensions are the same. Even the weight is the same at 72 or 71 to 72 grams, you know, depending on uh, the preciseness of your scale. Uh, it, it does have slightly different face screws, okay? If you look at that, where my thumbs are there, right? They're slightly different, okay? That's, that's got a kind of wider hole. This one's got a smaller hole. That's just a cosmetic difference, really. Uh, and it's got a light button finish that's slightly different. This one looks more plasticky around the outside here. I don't know if the camera's gonna capture it. This one does appear to have some sort of a steel or at least a chrome uh, rounding there. So that one actually looks a little bit more defined, I gotta say. So that, that one is a bit better uh, on this male model. And I, I think the overall dial look, because it's more like the Mudmaster, the real thing, is I think it's slightly better. I think that the, the, you know, if you're going by skin deep looks, just purely looks, I would say that that's actually slightly better. And then lastly, I'll say the buckle is a darn side better on the male. So, you know, Right, this is not quite as substantial as the real thing, but this one looks like you can grab it and bend it with your bare hands, okay? Right, just, just a slight difference there in terms of the thickness. I think that one's substantially, um, I guess, more solid. All right, but I'll tell you the module is mostly inferior, I gotta say. Um, so there's less display here. If, if you look at this one, all these uh, apertures are functional, right? You got the day, uh, date there, and you got the time display with the second counter, whereas this one, right, it's really only these two, the bottom one and uh, the one at three o'clock, they are functional. This this top one, I have no idea what it's actually doing. It's kind of got some random uh, blinking there. And, and if you know what it does, uh, let me know because I haven't been able to make any sense of those random blinks there. Okay, uh, and then uh, I'll say one thing about the strap as well. Whilst the buckle on the smell is better, the strap, uh, on the scame, right? The finishing, hopefully you can see the texture there. Just the feel of the strap is just slightly better. You know, I, I don't know what it is. Uh, hard to describe it. It's just just feels like a like a, work, a better finished strap. This one feels uh, less substantial, a little bit more soft and you know cheap feeling compared to that. Despite the fact that it ha it's got a better buckle. So there we go, guys. That's my comparison between the smell 
1545 um, and the SCMA 1155B, uh, you know, the difference between these two modules. Let me know what you think if you got uh, either of these watches or in fact, if you've got both of them, your particular thoughts. I mean, the last thing I'll mention is that the LED, there's, there's no doubt about it. It's, it's a very, very much better on this module compared to this one. This one's barely functional. Uh, and also, I forgot to say that this one does have a hourly chime setting, right? so you can set it to beep every hour, whereas this one, I can't figure it out. Or maybe I just missed it, but it doesn't appear to have that. All right, guys, that's my comparison. I've said enough. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Uh, you know, which one would you prefer if you have a preference for either one? Guys, if you enjoy my videos, do consider subscribing. New content every week, always aiming to be objective and unbiased about all things horology. Thank you again for sticking with me. And as always, I'll catch you guys next time.